And we are recording in three, two, and one. Oh, check out the shpoo at the bar. Can't you say nice lady at the bar? What? Why would I do that? That's not even derogatory. Oh, look. PJ's talking to the uh, to the girl. Aw, PJ and the shpoo. Welcome to episode 128 of Nerdery and Murdery. Big 128. I'm Zig with your Nerdery. And I'm Jeffrey with your Murdery. And we have uh, Guestry in the house. We have our good friend Donald, uh, who goes by Don Lad. <laughs> Just a mistake in spelling I did years ago, and it kind of stuck. So, <laughs> awesome. Um, I watched a terrifically weird strange movie this week have you seen the menu oh i keep meaning to dude it's weird it's 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 a it's suspense it's ray fines who is always good yeah um yeah it's one of those uh dinner party unexpected guest kind of movies yes kind of except all the guests are expected except one um and it's 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 a very exclusive restaurant he's like a world renowned chef Ray Fines is and uh he 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 has to tell a story for each course uh the whole the whole meal is a uh, is a theme there's a theme behind it and it's just it's terrifically weird it's very suspenseful and i i recommend it What's I, it on? Uh, what did I get? Max. Into? Max. I got it on Max. Is that Max? Yeah. yeah. It was. I think it was on Netflix. It made it. It's on something. Yeah. Something that I have. Yeah. All right, good deal. But give it a watch. Give it a watch. Just be prepared for a terrifically weird movie. I like weird movies. Yeah, I know you do, and <laughs> I I think you'll really like this. It was, it was. Wow, it was really good. I was I was surprised. I'd seen I'd seen clips of it, just various videos, uh, uh, clips. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna give this one a watch. So, wild, wild, wild. So, what's going on in your world? Uh, not much. Uh, we're having some construction done on the back of the house, so there's a giant trench outside. Mm. Uh, that Cree fell in. Uh, oh. Concussion. Oh no. Went to the doctor. Sure, also, didn't you? I did not. I did not. As a matter of fact, the last <laughs> thing I said to her before she went outside was, hey, don't fall in the hole. Oh. You <laughs> to see it into existence. <laughs> yeah. So she fell down, got a concussion. She went to the doctor to go get it checked out. She has a she had this was last week. She had a concussion. She tested positive for influenza B and COVID. <clears throat> wow. Should have left her in the hole. I, I don't, she's fine now. Well, that's well, good. She's still got a bruise, but... Well, I mean, so she's over the flu? Uh-huh. Fluvid, I guess, is what you mm -hmm. mean? Fluvid, yeah. That sounds awful. Well, that's good. I went At and... least it wasn't a terribly, you know, long recovery. Nope. Nope, it was... Uh, but yeah, she was she was in pretty bad shape for a couple of days there. Wow, that sucks. Yep. Dang, dang, dang. Well, all right. Well, then we need some... Uh... We need some good in our lives because this is a show about the good and the bad, the up and the down, ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, and the nerd and the merge. So, Zig, why don't you take it over with the nerdery side of the house? Okay. I'm so glad Don is on this episode. By the way, we've been trying to get Don on for a couple of years now. I'm so glad he's here. Um, yeah, today we're we never asked until this week. I've asked you like 10 times. Not no, you, never, you never actually asked. I am so sorry. If not an official capacity, hey, what would you like to hear? Why don't you come on and do it with us? It was Jeffrey who went, okay, be there. I, this is what time we're doing it. And I was like, oh, okay, so that's what just, I should have Just to be clear for those listening at home, I do not want to do it with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, not without a couple of drinks anyway. Anyway. Yeah, that's, that could be arranged. So today we're doing <laughs> five Laugh Out Loud sitcoms. So <clears> – <throat> We pulled oh, Jeffrey. Five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pulled Jeffrey, myself, and Will, and we all had five different ones. So, um, and I think some of these may hit your list as well, Don. 
Um, but the criteria was it had to make us laugh out loud um, at some time or another. We did these with movies, too. Yes, we did these with movies just recently. Um, so we'll start with Jeffrey's list. Jeffrey's list is Cheers, Friends, I Love Lucy, South Park, and Night Court. So we're going to start with Cheers. Cheers is, is an American sitcom television series that ran on NBC <clears throat> from 82 to 93 with a total of 275 22 to 26-minute episodes across 11 seasons. The show was produced by Charles Burroughs, Charles Productions in association with Paramount Network Television. It was created by the team of James Burroughs, Glenn, and Les Charles. The show is set in the, a titular bar in Boston where a group of locals meet to drink, relax, socialize, and hide from their daily day-to-day -day issues. Um, Burroughs uh, and the, the Charles brothers had just come off of Taxi. Actually, Taxi was still on when Cheers first started, but they kind of left Taxi to do Cheers. Um, and Cheers was – its first season, it almost got canceled. I didn't um, know that. Yeah, it almost got canceled because it was like at the bottom in the sitcom. Wow. Uh, ratings farm but nbc was so <clears throat> so psyched about this writing team and they thought it was funny so they gave them an, another season to kind of you know sit down and keep it going <clears throat> and it ran for 11 seasons you know or 10 seasons after that and it's one of the few shows out there that really had a perfect send-off when it ended i mean it was just it was perfect yeah, yeah it was Okay, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw myself under the bus here. Um, I'm actually not that big a fan of Cheers. Yeah, that's all right. I just I, I I was I I loved it. I absolutely loved it. We we even had a going away party for Cheers that Zig found some pictures of a couple years ago, which was funny. Uh -huh. uh, somebody he knew had a picture from that party, which was wild. Yes. Um, but I always loved it, especially when Harry Anderson would show up. So damn funny when he would show up as the as the con man, the the the, the local local street magician and con man. Just, just I don't know. Each each and every week was just so funny. Now, in saying that, I'm kind of of the unpopular opinion. I think it was better with Shelley Long versus I agree. Uh, Christy Alley versus Christy Alley. I think the Shelley yeah. Long years were better. I agree. I would agree with you there. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah. So, I, yeah, not a bad show, right? Um, and the times I did watch it, I found it enjoyable. Um, yeah, I just, you know, not, uh, not really made it into my top, top list. One of my all-time favorites. I was I was when I was I was obsessed with the show in the first season because I thought it was really funny because it was a good character study. Mm -hmm. um, but after after the the Sam and Diane dynamic where they were they were going to go off and then she ends up going off with Frasier instead. Um, I, I quit watching after that. I just didn't I didn't think it was funny anymore. Um, I picked it back up a few years later. Um, because of a friend who was obsessed, another friend who was obsessed uh, with it, uh, Wookie. Uh, Don will remember this one night we're all basically <laughs> <laughs> we're all peeling off scratch offs to, to <clears throat> money. just was, trying to get a couple of bucks of gas because they were for free gas. It yeah. wasn't even cash. Yeah, it was for free gas. So we're we're scratching these things off and. Don looks at uh, me and Wookie, and he's like, "It's Friday night. We've spent, we spent the last two hours scratching these things off for like ten bucks. We could have been doing something way more interesting." And <laughs> Wookie pipes up with, "Yeah, we missed Cheers in the Simpsons." <laughs> there has never been a sadder commentary on Three Bachelors ever in my life. I, I'll agree with that. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so funny. Wook, if you're out there, thank you for that. It's it's stuck in my mind and it's it was almost forty years ago. 
It was not. Oh, <clears throat> shit. <it> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Well, it was over 30, so. Um, uh, the next sitcom on Jeffrey's list is Friends. Um, Friends was an American television sitcom created by David Crane and Martha Kaufman, uh, which aired on NBC from September 22nd, 1994 to May 6, 2004, lasting 10 seasons. With an ensemble cast starring Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, Matthew Perry, and David Schwimmer. The show revolved around six friends in their 20s and early 30s who lived in Manhattan, New York City. The original executive producers were Kevin S. Bright, um, uh, David Crane, and Martha Kaufman, or Martha Kaufman and David Crane. Um, so, okay, I will say this about Friends. Um, I didn't start watching Friends until after another show in this list later on was off the air. <clears throat> I was a fan of Pigsty. And I saw Friends a couple times. I didn't think it was nearly as funny. Pixie actually came out like a few months after Friends did. Because uh, Friends started... I just said it. Friends started in September of uh, 1994. And Pigsty started in January of 95. So just a few months later. Um, when were they was, filmed? Hmm? Do you know? Do you know when uh, they were filmed? I, I think around the same time. Huh. Yeah. I wonder if that's, you know, um, mild plagiarism or just parallel <laughs> evolution. I, I have a, a tendency to think that it was uh, mild plagiarism. Um, I don't know which came first. Well, I know Friends was uh, Friends was aired first. Right. Um, but I will say this: I was I was a huge fan of Pixar, and I started watching Friends because. It was like Pigsty, and they'd take it Pigsty off the air. So I didn't really pick up Friends until, what, the second season? Uh, Pigsty... you know, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even know there was a second season. Oh, no, you're talking about Friends. Never mind. Yeah, uh, Friends. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Um, Pigsty but I thought also... the second season was funny. Pigsty also had a little bit of a, uh, what was it, one day at a time feel, too. Yes. Um, But, but Friends was... Uh, I thought it was funny in the first and second seasons. The third season was funny, and after that, I we've talked about this before. I, I kind of dropped off um, of Friends. I, I thought it, I thought it, it got less funny. Um, it was almost like they ran out of jokes. Oh, not me. I and I've gone back and I've watched it again um, multiple times actually, <clears throat> and I find every single episode funny every single time. Um, <laughs> just the the situations that they get in uh the 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 storylines themselves the acting is great in it uh had a ton of great guest stars come on uh probably my favorite is the i, th I think it was just one season but i but he he came back for others but when richard was on uh uh tom Selleck. tom Selleck. i i, I absolutely loved when he was on he was a great really kind of a straight guy to this group yeah um i loved it I, I i every single season of friends and this is another one that i also think ended perfectly uh it had a great ending a great send-off for the for the for the for the cast i just i, th I thought it was a brilliant show absolutely the ending was great um i i will say i feel like it should have happened sooner yeah um i i like the show okay uh, I love Matthew Perry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. His, his style of humor suits me. Yes. I don't know Same why. with me. Same with uh, me. Uh, gee, uh, uh, I, I don't know, Don, maybe because you <clears throat> aren't Chandler. But <laughs> <laughs> Is that me anymore, Chandler Bing? Exactly. exactly. It's Mrs. Chandler Bong. Yes. Mrs. Mrs. Chandler Bong. Yeah, Mrs. Ch Chandler Bong. Chandler Bong. Um, the other the other cast members are good and they they've got their moments right, mm -hmm. um, but yet yeah, for me I really watched for Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry burned that that series up, mm -hmm. I, I will say yeah. Even when the writing started to get lame and and there were even I think even Jeffrey could admit there about season five six, the writing kind of so, 
No, I disagree because I've gone back and watched it again, and it was it, it was brilliant all the way through. And then and then they brought in Paul Rudd later, who was phenomenal. He was great in it. I want to point out because you you mentioned this um, with Cheers too. Um, I feel like, especially for TV shows, but the Hollywood what writing rooms, right? Mm-hmm. Where they where they chain the uh, the writers to the desk and refuse to feed them until they crank out the script. Uh huh. Um, suck at complicated relationships. Yeah. Right. It, it, Moonlight, is, a, it, it is a story it is, about complicated relationships. Yes, very much so. Friends. Um, but see, when they started to try to resolve things, it's where they misstep. Those are those are your big fumbles, I think, in Friends. Yeah. You know. Uh, the, the back and forth with Ross and Rachel, um, the them shoehorning in that Ross's ex is a lesbian mm-hmm. um, felt really unnatural and really forced. Mm-hmm. You know, Hollywood sucks at those. It's like, do, do you guys know any real people who mm-hmm. go through this stuff? Uh, yeah, and I think that's uh, especially with sitcoms. That's your, um, that's typically their big stumbling block, block is romantic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, I think that may be why I like community so much because they just kind of shied away from all of it. They're like, man. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to have that. No, you don't. Right. Just leave it out. Movies too. Hollywood, if you're listening, you... <laughs> they are. They've been repping our movies movie, for 30 right? years. <laughs> so, Batman by definition, doesn't need a romantic interest in the goddamn movie. No. No, it doesn't. Batman is fine as Batman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he specifically... Vo- anyway, that, that's a whole other thing. So, <laughs> yeah, next show on the list, what? <laughs> I, I will say that, <clears throat> um, I can understand why why Friends ran as long as it did just like Cheers. Uh I, I think it had more to do with the acting than the writing. The the the, the actors in both of those shows were exceptional, uh, particularly Matthew Perry. I actually liked Matthew Perry's stuff that he did after Cheers. I did. Or, I'm sorry. Oh, um, I did. Right after Friends, I I really didn't. Studio sixty on the Sunset Strip was probably one of the best shows I've ever seen, and it got killed. What was the What was the one where he's in? He's the radio guy, the sports radio guy. Go on. Huh. Go on. It's yes. called Go On. Yeah. That is, that, oh my God, that show was so great. Yeah. Mr. Sunshine, too. He did that between Studio 60 and Go On. Um, and then he did The Odd Couple, which ran for two or three seasons with Thomas Lennon. That was pretty funny. Oh, uh, I need to watch that then. Yeah. Uh, well, it's also got uh, Yvette Nicole Brown from uh, Community in it, too. Who is always, another one who's always funny. Mm-hmm. The next show in Jeffrey's list is I Love Lucy. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this. Lucille Ball was on television from 1951 till the mid-70s, and then she came back in the mid-80s. Yep. Um, She is the queen of comedy. um, Star Trek. And Star Trek. Yes. Yeah, I think we should – if we ever decide to get an office, I think we should get a big – poster of her in a uh, in a Starfleet Admiral's or Commodore's uniform because I've seen it out there it looks great television owes a tremendous debt to to Lucille Ball yes oh I agree do. I agree and, and this show was brilliant uh another one just the stuff that she would get into week in and week out uh, her 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 playoff Desi Arnaz and uh uh, uh Oh God, I'm forgetting the other two. Um, Fred and Ethel. Yeah, Fred and Ethel. Who, Vivian I mean, Vance and William Frawley. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just the way they all played off each other was just it was it was, it was brilliant. It it was a brilliant show, and each and every episode is extremely funny. She broke so much ground with this show. Oh yeah, and she she fought for that too because you know younger Lucille Ball. Uh, she, absolutely beautiful woman, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so they wanted her 
as your typical Hollywood leading lady. She didn't want to um, do that. Right. She, she's Lucille Ball, you know? And if she had listened to agents uh, and stuff like that, we'd have never had that show, um, which never would have led to tons of other shows. Yeah. But the, the you know, the ground they broke, like, um, when she's pregnant, you know, and going through all that. Because you didn't do that kind of thing on TV. No, you um, did not. Which is why they had to have separate beds, mm -hmm. right? And they had to dance around. You know, he never says that she's pregnant in the show. That she's going to have a baby. Pregnant. Right. Cause, well, because you couldn't say pregnant on TV. You know, stupid little things like that. And they, they pushed through and soldiered on through all of that. And, uh, yeah, she, she is a legend. Yep. Oh, yeah. Absolutely iconic. Yep. And the show, and yeah, the show is funny. Absolutely brilliant show. Yes. The show is funny. Their, their writer's room was great. And, and I would say not just this show, but this show, and I would say probably the Honeymooners are the reason why we have sitcoms at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. If, uh, the Honeymooners... I believe, and I Love Lucy started about the same time. I Love Lucy started, uh, okay, October 15th, 1951, and ran to May 6th, 1957. They did 180 episodes. Um, from 57 to 60, it was known as the Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Show, and later in reruns it was called the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour. And from 61 to about 69, she did, okay, I can't remember if it's the Lucy show or I think it was uh, the Lucy show. Yeah, and then and then after that she did Love with Lucy until the mid seventies. So again, mm -hmm. she was on television in the, in a sitcom format from nineteen fifty one to nineteen seventy. I believe it was nineteen seventy seven. Yeah, yeah, and that's not to mention all the other shows she had a hand in. Uh huh. You now in uh, in with getting on the air and promoting and yeah, um, with her production company, reporting from behind. Yeah. And, yeah, and I don't know if you've seen the um, the dramatization they did. I think it was on Prime. Lucy and Desi, really good. Oh, with Nicole really Kidman. Did, yes. Did yeah, they get, I didn't mean to watch that. I heard it's really good. Did they get it, her it her second <laughs> husband in the producer? Because like after she and Desi split up. She got with this producer, and the no. reason she's such a big producer no. is because of that guy. No. And then she was with him till till he died. No, the the movie itself basically takes place over a one week period oh crap uh, and, oh. It's, and it's about getting one particular episode on the air oh wow um, and it's it's really 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 good nice yeah i mean it's yeah that, it i think don's right it cannot be overstated enough how important this woman was to mm -hmm. to television and how important this sitcom was to basically sitcoms because it spawned Again, I would say also the Honeymooners because uh, they started about the same time. But before that, we hadn't done any situation comedy. Uh, mm -hmm. The British were doing it, but we weren't. Um, yes, well, the British were doing it, but it wasn't quite as funny. <laughs> it's funny in a different way. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, funny haha -ha or funny weird. What's the difference? Funny haha -ha is a rubber chicken. Funny weird is rubbing a chicken. Right. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the next show on the list is South Park. It's an a American animated sitcom created by Trey Parker and Matt Stone and developed by Brian uh, Graydon for Comedy Central. The series revolves around four boys, Stan Marsh, Kyle Bravlovsky, Brav Eric Cartman, and Kenny McCormick, and their exploits in and around the titular Colorado town of South Park. Also features many recurring characters. The series became infamous for its profanity and dark, surreal humor that satirizes a large range of subject matter. Um, <clears throat> the the thing that that really makes the show so funny, and they got better and better and better at this as time went on. And I, I I'm trying to catch up on episodes because I I missed a, a lot of these. And I'm trying to catch up, but what they got really, really, really good at was producing and writing these episodes that were so immediately on point to something <laughs> that was going on in the world. Oh yeah. And, and it, I mean, it was quick. 
it was really quick. Some recent current event, and they're getting an episode out about it. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it is just brilliant. They it, don't It's because care. they produce episodes in real time. Yes. They don't care what people think about them. They don't care who they offend. And it is just hysterical. Absolutely hysterical. Yeah, they're I'm, true satirists. Yes. I'm going to throw out a, another unpopular opinion here. So I feel like South Park jumped the shark so long ago that all that's left of the shark is fossilized teeth. <laughs> so you you pulled out of uh, South Park a long time ago? Um, the Mecha Streisand episode? No, oh, wow. I, that was a long time ago. No, I, I want to say I stopped watching South Park when they introduced um, the, the fetus on face. The lady with the fetus on her face? Oh, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. The, she didn't last real long. Yeah, but it was enough to... It turned me off of the show enough that I don't really... That I never really watched it after that. Um, Not I that just, the writing of the show... I, I just feel like it's one of those things where they push too far. Uh, and for me, you know, it just lost me because it wasn't funny. Uh, not for me. I, I, I'm... I'm, I'm I, I think of South Park like uh, uh, like a pool. Uh, I'm swimming in a pool. I usually like to swim underwater, but every once in a while, I gotta poke my head up and take a breath. And everybody else is peeing it. Yes, yes. Uh, they actually did an episode on that. Uh, yes. And, and when I when I poke my head up and watch it, it's still funny, but I don't keep up with it. You know what I mean? It's not in my yeah. it's not in my wheelhouse. But every time I pop pop my head up to see it. It's like, okay, this is still funny. Mm -hmm. This is still good satire. Yep. Um, and it's, you know, it's gross out humor as well, which I also like. Well, yeah, and, you know, it's and totally I humor. Them for, be, well, they intentionally push those boundaries. Yes. yes. Um, and try to push them too far, which I applaud them for mm -hmm. because I feel like not enough media does that. Um, it's just, you know, one of the risks you run when you push that hard is you push some people away. Uh, I just happen to be one of those. I'm obviously, you know, in the minority considering their fan base. Uh, <laughs> my not watching them hasn't hurt them any. Uh, yes. So, you know, uh, you guys keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, I, I, will say, <laughs> I, I don't keep up with it, but when I do poke my head up from the waves, it's still funny. So, yes. <clears throat> it's, it's, you know... Um, the last episode, I, I don't even remember what it was, <clears throat> but I just put it on and started watching. I thought it was funny. Uh, there are some episodes that are so damn funny, it just brings tears to my eyes. Just cracks me up. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I guess maybe I moved into the orbit of uh, – I'm like a lost moon. I've moved into the orbit of Rick and Morty. Hmm. I have never seen a single episode of Rick and Morty. Oh, my God. It's I so have, funny. And you know, it's, it's, it's Dan Harmon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, who did Community? So, and it's got that vibe. It's got that weirdo vibe to it. It's definitely weird. It's not one I can keep up with. But anyway, that that one's not on our list. <laughs> no, it is not. Um, <clears throat> the next uh the next series is Night Court. Night Court is an American television sitcom that aired on NBC for nine seasons, 193 episodes. From January 4th, 1984 to May 31st, 1992, set in the night shift of a Manhattan criminal court presided over by a young, unorthodox judge, Harold Harry T. Stone, portrayed by Harry Anderson, who we spoke about a little earlier. It was created by comedy writers Reinhold Wiege, who had previously worked on Barty Miller in the 70s and early 80s. Um, the reason we know that it's Reinhold Wiege is because Trey went out and researched it and heard him say his own name. It is what Reinhold Wiege. Oh, well, good. And we are indebted to Trey for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love Mike. Well, I love Harry right. Anderson. Yes. Right? I haven't yeah. I haven't watched the the the, the, new one? The, the new one yet. I love the new one. Um, I is, know it's I know it's going into its second season. It is just as weird and funny. Um Dan Dan has gone from a <clears throat> curmudgeon -y, uh from a curmudgeon -y ladies man um to um uh, a curmudgeon -y almost father figure to Abby. 
Well, yeah. he his character started changing in the course of the Night Court show anyway, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, becoming more of a, like, a begrudging good guy, yeah. almost anti-hero kind of thing. Yeah. In, in sartorial as well. Is that a good, yeah. is that, yeah. is that a, yeah. Yeah, okay. it works. It plays. Yeah. Okay, run on. But this is another one that is, that every single episode is laugh out loud. There's not a single episode that will let you down. Yeah. Not a single one in Night Court. The, 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 the casting is great, even though they had to change actors um, in different parts uh, in, in different parts of the series run because people died. Yeah. Um, but, people died, or in, in, in some cases, they wanted to move on and do something yes, else. Yes. Um, and they brought in people who were just equally as good in yeah. the show and were just brilliant to play off each other. The, the, it, it, brilliant, brilliant show. It, yeah, it's like they would bring in a secondary character, and the actor do a good job, and they'd be like, "Yeah, but we need to knock it up a notch." So they'd bring in someone else, and it, but it was great. Um, and when they finally locked it down, it stayed locked down pretty well, yeah. especially the last four or five seasons. And there were so many people on that show. Uh, well, no, okay, I take that back. So maybe not so many people, but notably. Right. So I love Richard Mole. He he went on to do more, I guess, voice acting than yeah. anything else. But he was the evil sorcerer in The Sword and the Sorcerer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, rest in peace, Richard Mole. Yep. But, uh, and Dungeon Master, who, who, we, who we've spoken about at length. Mm-hmm. Um, young Brent Spiner. Yes. Very young Brent Spiner. You know, on the show, um, as, the, as the country bumpkin, you know. And there were, there were a couple... Um, you know, I don't know if you'd call them guest appearances so much uh, or cameo. I don't, you know, um, but yeah, there was a lot of a lot of great people pass through Harry's courtroom, mm-hmm. you know, um, on their way through, uh, and it's it's great to see. And you know, there's there's it's I don't I don't think it's ever been confirmed, but there's a theory out there that Night Court was the court of record for Barney Miller's precinct. Yes. Yes. Oh, that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah, some of the same actors. I don't know if the characters were the same, but yeah, the people that were in jail at Barney Miller's <coughs> precinct ended up in Harry T. Snow's court. Yes. <sighs> yeah, Night Court is amazing. Yep. Um, and I've gone back and watched it. It's... Uh, it's it's really really good. I went back and watched it because we watched the new series. Uh, Lorelai loves the new Light Night Court because she she likes the the idea of the the woman judge and and everything else. And so I've been a big fan of the new series, and we're we're waiting for the second season. Um, but I went back and and showed her some of the old se- uh, series, and she's like, that's that's pretty funny. That's but now she now she refer every time she sees John Larroquette, she refers to him as Dan. <laughs> and he went on to a really great show after Night Court called the John Larroquette Show, which does not nearly get the props it deserves. Yeah, that that was a great show. And they too. they screwed with that show a little too much and made it less funny. And oh, less was it the Fox Show? Yeah. yeah when that they, makes sense. Yeah, they've changed him from from <laughs> being the nighttime bus manager to the daytime bus manager, and it just totally changed the dynamic of the show. Well, that does it for Jeffrey's list. Other than get out there and watch Night Court, um, it's readily available on a lot of stuff. Um, same with South Park. I love Lucy, Friends, and Cheers. You can you can catch them all in different places. I have included some episodes and snippets in our YouTube playlist. My list is Community, Pigsty, SCTV, Letterkenny, and Detroiters. Um, we have done entire episodes on community and Detroiters, so we just won't talk about those. Hey, you, you can go back and check out our episodes. We'll wait. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just I, – okay. th- those just don't hold my interest. I'm not going to believe or belay your point. We've we've covered these. We'll move on. Yeah. But we I are going to talk – something in there. So I, I've only seen scattered episodes of community, mm-hmm. right? Community to me <clears throat> – uh, for me – falls into the same category as Parks and Rec, 
Mm -hmm. If I sit down and pay attention to an episode, they're funny. They're really funny. I just never think to watch them. Um, Like Rose, uh, my youngest daughter, uh, absolutely loves the shows, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I'll hear them when she's watching them in the background, stuff like that. And, yeah, they're funny. It's just for some reason when I'm looking for something to watch, um, even if I'm looking for something funny to watch, just never occurs to me to watch those. Right on. So is that, is that Community and D- Detroiters? No, not Detroiters. Uh, for me, that's communities, Community and Parks and Rec. Okay, that's fair. Well, the next series is Pigsty. Pigsty is very hard to find. I did get it in an episode on our YouTube playlist, so if you want to go out and check it out, you should. I don't even I remember to, this show. I had to dig way down deep into the bowels of YouTube to find it. It is not a great copy, but I believe it is the episode with PJ and the Shpoo. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Um, but I, I would like to go out and find a couple more. Um, it had such great, um, both in-your-face humor, mm-hmm. right? Um, so humor that was both applied liberally with a sledgehammer mm-hmm. and then also applied subtly with a fine paintbrush yes yes uh uh, pigsty (laughs) pigsty was it was to me pigsty was what friends was trying to do in its first season but pigsty didn't make it because it was on upn pigsty i don't think that's why they didn't make it you you don't I'm, i'm gonna be honest with you i think uh i think what hurt them the most is they were too smart okay there was too much smart humor in there to make it in the mainstream. Okay. Um, I, 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 I could agree with that. Uh, Pixar was pretty – again, like you said, there was there, – on the outside, it, it was sledgehammer comedy. But on the inside, it was fine two-hair paintbrush painting, and it was brilliant. Right. I mean, uh, come on. What other sitcoms have a, a throwaway line – about Dominique Dunn writing novels about their family. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, it's probably six people who are watching the show across the nation got that joke, but it was funny. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, Pigsty is an American situation uh, comedy that aired on UPN during the network's first season. The series premiered on January 23rd, 1995, ran on Monday nights after Star Trek Voyager and Platypus Man, and was canceled after 13 episodes on May 15, 1995. Pigsty was produced by Paramount Network Television. The show uh, was about five male roommates sharing an apartment in New York City and their female superintendent. Um, and it was what? A, was it a three- or four-bedroom apartment? Because Cal had to live in a closet. I think it was three. Yeah, and I think two of them had to share a room. Right. Uh, Iowa got his own room because he was paying the rent. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so it's – this guy is moving out of his apartment with his roommates. Uh, So he moves off, um, and then uh, the roommates get another roommate to move in with them, and then the the original guy comes back. This all happens in the first episode. And then another guy decides he's going to move in as well. So there's five guys in this swanky New York uh, apartment, um, and then, of course, the superintendent who lives upstairs, and they will break things just so she will come down and fix things because they like to hot. hang out with her. Yeah. And she's she, hot. Yeah, and she also went on to, to play uh, – oh, God, they didn't call her American Maid. She was in the Tick series, the, the first Tick series. She played American Maid, whatever that character was. Um, Florence, yeah, I don't remember. Florence Vasey, I think, was her name. But yeah, the show, the show was great. I loved this show. Um, uh, the, the guy who came in, they called him Iowa because that's where he was from. He was he was a doctor doing his first year of residency. <clears throat> or no, he just finished his residency and was assigned to a hospital in New York. So he gets this night, and he's this kind, caring. 
<clears throat> soft individual. Midwest. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah, good. Yeah, like you'd expect from somebody who they call Iowa. Yeah. Um, you had PJ, who was a trust fund kid, who was an artist. Um, so, and let's not understate that. So, not not trust fund, um, you know, a couple of million dollars. Yeah. Uh, not, not even – I mean, we're, we're talking about like, um, what at the time Paris Hilton level. Yeah. 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 He was, he was, he was like a Getty. Yeah. But but that's the thing. The guys who lived with him didn't know that because he didn't care about that. He was, he was this almost childlike character. And then you had, uh, the writer who'd moved out and moved back in, um, you had Cal, who was uh, an insurance salesman? No, no, no. He was uh, he worked as a stockbroker, and he was crass, and he smoked cigars, and he he was a nineteen eighties car salesman. That's what I loved about right. him. Yeah. Well, he was your obligatory um, uh, douchebag. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But he was he was the one delivering the sledgehammer comedy. Everybody else was doing the fine painting. It was yeah, just brilliant. I, so I'm going to go back to that. I think another thing that hurt the show is because a, at the time, too, she was she delivered smart, biting comedy like Matthew Perry did in Friends. Yes. Um, yes. And I think that because she was a woman doing strong comedy good. like that, I yeah. think that unfortunately hurt the show. Yeah, whereas if they'd have done that show 10 years later, it would have been on for 10 seasons. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, so I cannot recommend Pigsty enough. Uh, it is very hard to find. You can go to our YouTube play- playlist and check it out. Jeffrey, what did you think about you, – you said you don't even remember this show. No, right? I don't even, no, I don't remember this show at all. Oh, my God. Don and so I it were – It didn't, didn't make an impact on Jeffrey. No. no, but Don and I were obsessed with this show, oh, <laughs> which yeah. is why I'm so glad you're on this. Because like I said Pig's Die, and people look at me like I'm, I've grown a third head. My other favorite line from the show, because this is, you know, so I remember these are moments from the show that made me laugh out loud, mm-hmm. right? You know, the PJ and the Shpoo, uh, the, the Dominique Dunn line. Um, also, so Iowa, right? He's, uh, I think he had just gotten out of the shower, and he's rocking around, and he's got his shirt off, mm-hmm. and... Mm-hmm. She's like, hey, Iowa, you've been working out? And he kind of puffs up and he goes, yeah, a little. And she goes, she pets him on the stomach and goes, how about a little more? And it's just, it's like, dope, dude, that was, that was harsh. And I, I was just sold on the show, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it was, it was definitely a good one. I will go and see if I can't find some more episodes for that one. We might do a deeper dive on Pigsty. Uh, assuming I could find some more information. Um, again, I stopped watching Pigsty because it went off the air, and then I started watching Friends because it reminded me of Pigsty. Um, it was a Pigsty substitute. Yeah, it was a Pigsty. It was a Pigsty substitute, and that's what I always thought of Friends as. And maybe that's why I wasn't nearly as into it. You know, maybe if I hadn't had Pigsty first, I probably would have really loved Friends. Um, but, and again, it's not. I still don't think it's a bad show. The writing was great. Matthew – well, the writing was great in the first few seasons. Matthew Perry was exceptional in that show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, Pig's is a, a weird one. I'll go see if I can't find some more. The next uh, not so much sitcom but comedy series in the list is SCTV or Second City Television, commonly shortened to SCTV and later known as SCTV Network and SCTV Channel is a Canadian television sketch comedy show that ran intermittently between 1976 and 1984. It was created as an offshoot from Toronto's Second City Troupe. Uh, It is an example of a Canadian show that moved successfully to U.S. television where it aired on NBC from 1981 to 1983. The show's premise is the broadcast day of a fictitious TV station, later network, in the town of Mellonville. Mellonville's location is left unspecified. The earliest episodes imply it is in Canada, uh, but most later episodes place it in the U.S. 
A typical episode of SCTV presents a compendium of programming uh, seen on the station throughout the broadcast day. A given episode could contain SCTV news broadcasts, sitcoms, dramas, movies, talk shows, children's shows, and advertising send-ups hawking fictitious projects. Uh, and get, as well as game shows, they had soap operas. Um, and uh, so one of the things about uh, SCTV, because it was on uh, uh, the, C- the CBC, or Canadian Broadcasting System, it didn't have commercials. Uh, so when they sent it over to America, they had to add an extra five minutes to it. That's where the Great White North comes from. The Canadians never saw that. Huh. That, it only ran here. That part of it, they didn't see. Well, I think they saw it eventually in reruns years later. But yeah, the Bob and Doug McKenzie, the two Canadian hosers drinking beer and talking to a camera, <clears throat> which they made a movie out of, which I love. <laughs> um, that, that, was, that was only broadcast in America. Um, and it started as a joke. They're like, hey, uh, we need an extra five minutes. And they went to Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis and said, hey, can you guys, you know, can you guys do a little five-minute sketch? But make it Canadian. And they're like, what, you want two guys in toques drinking beers, talking about <laughs> hockey? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. So that's what they did. See, and I think there's better sketch shows out there. I understand some great actors came out of this. Some great comedic actors came out of SCTV. But I thought, I, I really think there are better sketch shows out there that are much, much, much funnier. Um, and maybe I'm the unpopular one when I'll say these, but the two <laughs> that come to mind uh huh, immediately, Mad TV. Okay, I can agree, agree with you there. That's and, up, and Upright Citizens Brigade. Upright Citizens Brigade was hysterical. Upright <laughs> Citizens Brigade, and, and, and I can go to one episode that I could turn it on right now and I, I will be in tears laughing. And it's about the kid who has the uncomfortably long penis. Little Donnie. <laughs> the, the little Donnie episode is so fucking funny. Yeah, it is. I, I got to go watch it. I got to go find that, 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 that sketch and watch it. Upright Citizens Brigade was brilliant. Yeah, it was a brilliant. full episode on a sketch where they were, it yes. was like a, a telethon for little Donnie. Oh, and, and he just, was obsessed with Tuvok from Star Trek. With Tuvok. Do you guys, uh, do you guys remember Fridays? I love Fridays. I was going to say, I would say Fridays was actually funnier than SCTV. However, SCTV made me laugh out loud when I was like nine, 10 years old. And it was my first foray into subversive television. And the fact that it was used as a television station as a framing device is why I included it in sitcoms, because basically it was. Um, and The Great White North. I think that's the funniest part of the show, and I feel so sad for the Canadians they didn't get it at the time. I, I, I find it very telling that the three of us here and you know briefly discussed very, very funny um, skit shows, right? Nobody mentioned SNL. Well, because Because... SNL had its good days, and then it had its bad years. Uh Right. So for me, SNL, even in its heyday, was – you watched for a couple of guys. Belushi and Aykroyd, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Will uh, Ferrell, Dana, Dana, Dana Carvey. Mike See, for Myers. me, it wasn't Will Ferrell and Dana Carvey. Well, I had already given up on SNL by the time they, they yeah. got really big. But, you know, even in the early days, um, you know, it was a handful of guys carrying the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and overall, uh, if you compare it to, you know, most of the other shows like that, which unfortunately SNL um, beat out, you know, because a lot of these didn't last. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, I, in my opinion, they were many of them were superior uh, to SNL. Agreed. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I would agree. And and, and, and and that's one thing I liked about SCTV. Everybody carried their their fair share of the the water on that show. They weren't re- reliant on one or two guys. 
Um, I will say this. I watched Saturday Night Live, as a matter of fact, last night, before the, the night before the taping of this episode. Um, I will say they have probably got one of the most well-rounded casts that they've had in a long time. They're not, they're not pushing everything off on one or two people. Uh, Kate McKinnon was the host last night. Um, Love her. Yeah. Uh, but like like everybody in the show now is a utility player, and I like that. I like that for them, and it's it's funny. Again, not every sketch hits, you know. Oh sure, but I mean you run into that anyway. Yeah, but and like I mean, I'm, I, I'm thinking I about like the mid '80s when you're watching it and none of the sketches hit. Yeah, sometimes there were episodes that were painful to get through. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, and, and none of the sketches hit, and it's like – that's why everybody was like, hey, you know, aren't you into Wayne's World and all that stuff? I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to watch a whole show for one sketch. Yeah, and see, and even at that, they they took sketches uh, and made the movies. Some of them hit, like Wayne's World, and then some of them, like, this is Pat. Stuart um, Smalley saves the world. Yeah. Yeah, just completely miserably bombed. And then the – the majority of them kind of hit somewhere in the middle, you know, like Superstar and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Night at the Roxbury. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Night at the Roxbury. Yep. You know, which I I enjoy. I think it's a, I it's a funny movie. I did too. But, uh, yeah, I, a lot of times they uh, – it's like they didn't know when to stop the joke. Right. Right? It's too much cocaine. Yeah, you know, as someone who did a lot of cocaine <laughs> – um, I'm sorry. As someone who's heard about um, experiences with of people who did a lot of cocaine, uh, yeah, you're never funny on cocaine. <laughs> I feel like that was a problem. They just had big lines in the writers' room. It's like Except we need to keep this joke going for 20 minutes. No, no, you don't. You need to cut to the next sketch. I think Richard Pryor is probably the exception. To yeah. <clears throat> yes. Oh, oh, and Robin Williams. Yes, Robin Williams was funnier in cocaine. And he didn't steal as, as many jokes as he did later on in life. Because he did. He stole a lot of jokes after after he got clean. There's a lot of people who were really pissed off about it. Well, you know what? If they were if they were funnier, maybe the jokes would have landed for them instead of Robin. Uh, there are people who have pointed that out as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean like Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks was great in the mid – mid 80s to the early 90s and unfortunately he passed away people have been ripping that dude off for years and it's it's not so much it's not so much the joke it's the way he observes things that that people riff on um (laughs) except for in some cases directly stole a joke (laughs) um think of a couple people here i don't you know i don't want to cause any controversy dane cook Dane Cook. Yeah, Dane Cook has been. He oh and, he's yeah I've 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 just sat down and, and heard a shot for shot sound bite. It's like oh my god he really, I've heard that before. That's been fixed. They they say that about Carlos Mencia too. That, oh yeah. That he stole. Oh, Carlos stuff, Mencia so. is a douchebag. Yeah. I I will just throw it right out there. He steals jokes. He he has no sense of um honor or. Uh, camaraderie with the comedy community. No, the rest um, of the community doesn't really care for him. He's just he's just terrible. Mm-hmm. Zig, you need an, an exterminator. You Why? have critters in your house. I do. I have a critter right back here. Right back there. See? I love it. She's trying to be so quiet, too. I don't recall you having any critters that large in your home. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, th- this critter's now nine, so. Nine, really? Yeah, nine. Yeah. Feeling old yet? Uh, no, so we took care of that, you know, when we started with the comment about Wookiee in 40 years. So. Yeah, okay, right on. Uh, okay, so the next, uh, the next episode, or the next series I want to talk about is Letterkenny, also a Canadian series. Letterkenny is a Canadian sitcom created by Jared Kiso, developed and written primarily by Kiso and Jacob Tierney, uh, directed by Tierney and starring Kiso, Nathan Dales, Michelle Mallette, and K. Trevor Wilson. Originally a YouTube web series called Letterkenny Problems, 
The show was commissioned for television by Crave in March of 2015 and premiered in February of 2016. The show follows the adventures of the people raised in a uh, fictional town of Letterkenny, Letterkenny, a rural Irish-Canadian community in Ontario, Canada. Um, again, the show is of a small town. It's a framing device for the sketches that they wrote about these weirdos in the small town. Because it is, Letterkenny is essentially a sketch show. <laughs> It is. Uh, I wish you guys could really see this because I keep doing the thing that I do when we're all together with the pointing uh -huh. at the person. Yeah, I can't see you pointing. Out. Right. <laughs> I'm pointing at your face right now. Uh, Leather Kenny goes into the, the community parks rec thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, I've never actually sat down to watch it, but I've watched parts of episodes and I, I've looked up clips on YouTube too. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, because I wanted to, basically, because I wanted to get the whole to be fair uh, effect. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Yeah. To be fair. Um, so it's very funny. I just never think to sit down to watch it. Uh, I binged watched um, after it got onto Hulu. Uh, I don't remember how far I got. I think to season seven or eight. Uh, it's going into its final season now, and I need to catch up on those. It's so funny. The only thing, the only thing that bugs me because I I just can't, I, I really can't stand the characters. Are Stuart and his group? I can't stand those characters. I, I wish they'd go away. Oh, the skids. Yes, the skids. I can't stand yeah. them. But I but I, th I don't think it. that hits nearly as well as some of the other sketches. Yeah, Agree. Um, yeah, Some of it is a little Canadian. funny. We're um, not Canadian either. Uh, Jacob Tierney, you know who Jacob Tierney is, right? He's the no. preacher. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Jared Kiso and and uh, Jacob Tierney. And what's funny is they started doing this as an aside, like they were on this real serious drama in Canada. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like Rescue Nine One or Nine One One over here, right? It's this real serious drama. Well, they started cutting up on the side, and it this became more popular than that Rescue 911 series. Uh, and they all did it for several years. Everybody on Letterkenny originally was on that show. Oh, wow. Um, wait, wait, wait. I want to see if she tries to duck under the camera again when she goes back. Okay. Well, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've got uh, the next series uh, is Detroiters, which we did an entire episode on. Um, Detroiters makes me laugh every time I see it. Um, I, I can't say enough about it. Um, I think it's hysterical, and I think it's hysterical because there's only like 20 episodes. Like they crammed everything they could into that series, and, uh, and it's a love affair for Detroit. And, All and right. Covered it. Move on. <laughs> I've never even heard of it. Yeah, I had neither, and I, I'm not going to sit down and watch it. Oh, it's really funny. Um, it's funny like Pigsty's funny. Um, sort of. It's a little more like Letter Kitty. Um, all right, so that does it for my list. The next list is Will's, and his his list is Family Guy, American Dad, Martin, Boondocks, and Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So, uh, we'll start with Family Guy. It's an American animated sitcom created by Seth MacFarlane for the Fox Broadcasting Company. The series premiered on January 31st, 1999, following Super Bowl 33, with the rest of the first season airing two months later, beginning on April 11th, 1999. The show centers around the Griffins, the dysfunctional family consisting of parents Peter and Lois, their children Meg, Chris, and Stewie, and their anthropomorphic pet dog, Brian, set in the fictional city of Quahog, Rhode Island. The show exhibits much of its humor in the form of metafictional cutaway gags and often lampooning American culture. Um, Family Guy is another one of those where I'm, I'm, I'm in the pool. I, you know? And I would agree with that on Family Guy. I, I, think, I think Family Guy tries too much, too much to be in the present like south park does that south park mm -hmm. does brilliantly mm -hmm. consistently all the time i think family guy tries to do that and i think there's some funny stuff in family guy 
I just don't think it's always consistent. I think there's sometimes that they take jokes too far. Mm -hmm. Not not in not in not as in too far as you know oh that joke was too over the top that was bad that was offensive the sketches they run too long they run too long yeah. um the biggest example of that and they bring it back time and time and time again is peter versus the giant chicken <laughs> those sometimes go on too long now they've done some brilliant stuff like their parody they did on the star wars saga yeah something was, something dark side something something dark side that was brilliant absolutely brilliant and everything in it was brilliant yeah I, I i will i will say this what i love best about that is the middle one was the best yes and then the the last star wars one that they did something something dark side <clears throat> they intentionally made the story not as good yep <laughs> and they and, he, and mentioned it in the story yeah he's like oh yeah i told you this wasn't as good yeah <clears throat> Yeah, so 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 Family Guy, like I said, I think it has its ups and its downs. I've I, I've seen some stuff of it that's very very funny, and then I think they they sometimes just drag stuff on way too much. But it's I I think it's decent. Uh, I, I I don't consider it all laugh out loud. Um, there are times that it's spin off. The Cleveland Show is better. Um, sometimes the Cleveland Show doesn't hit at all. So you yeah. know I, I I don't know I. I, I can enjoy Family Guy enough. I just don't. I wouldn't put it in my list. Right on. So, here's my take on Family Guy. Uh, Seth MacFarlane has ADD. Yes. Because when he is focused, typically he's really funny. Super talented guy, right? Don't don't get me wrong about that. Um, but when he doesn't have a clear focus, the humor doesn't hit as well. Yeah. Um, and honestly, sometimes even when he's focused, uh, it sucks. A Million Ways to Die in the West, I'm looking directly at you. Right. I'm oh, right. see, I thought that movie was hysterical. Stupid. You're an idiot. Yeah, you're you're an absolute <laughs> idiot. That, that movie was stupid. It was horrible. The uh, So the concept, uh, it could have been absolutely brilliant. It, uh, you know done the right way it could have been another blazing saddles mm -hmm. um but all the the best thing i can say about it is it was better than ridiculous six um yeah so uh but yeah no family guy uh has some absolutely brilliant moments um but unfortunately i think it's another show that's gone on too long yep yep yeah and and i I, I think I'm uh, again. I'm 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 with the Family Guy. I'm I'm just like I am with South Park. I'm in the pool on it. When I poke my head up and take a look at it, it's funny, but not all of it's funny. Well, and right. and and so I'll go ahead and transition to the next one, American Dad. Yep. Because it's the same way. Yeah. There are some very, absolutely brilliant, funny stuff, but uh, but I would say that on as on the whole. American Dad doesn't have as many of them as Family Guy does. I think yeah. I think American I think American Dad hits the mark less than than Family Guy does. Um, it's a derivative, and I think the derivatives almost always yeah. uh, are diluted. You know, <clears throat> and a matter of course. Yeah, that's a real critter. Hold hold on, hold on a second. See, and an and American Dad is 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 like Family Guy, although it is more straightforward. There's less cutting away um, because um, American Dad uh, was created by Seth MacFarlane and Mike Barker. Mike Barker kind of took uh, American Dad on because MacFarlane was working on other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but he wanted to center it more on the family and just the bizarreness of the family. I will agree with Will on American Dad. There's some there's some episodes of American Dad that are that are hysterical. The 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 episode where they basically redo three o'clock high. I love. Probably doesn't hurt that they play a lot of uh, Bah House and um, and Joy Division in it. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I'm. I'm I'm kind of the same with American Dad that I am with Family Guy and and some of the others. I'm, I'm swimming through the pool on it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm poke but, my head yeah. up. I, for I me poke, with American Dad, I don't even poke my head up. I don't, I don't bother with it at all anymore. 
I, I I've watched episodes here and there, but it, they're just not enough that I that I would stick with it. I just that, right that's it's really kind of more of a pass to me. So, right on. Um, how do you feel? I mean, what about the Cleveland show? So you think the Cleveland show? Yeah, maybe... that's what I said. I think the Cleveland show is. I think it's good. I think I think it has its good moments. I think it has its not so great moments. I it, like Don said. I think when Seth MacFarlane is really focused, he does some really good stuff, and I think sometimes he gets unfocused. So, Ted. Anyway. The Orville. Uh, the the Orville, I think, is the best thing he's done. I would agree with that. And I need to watch that. I haven't watched it. At oh all. my god, it's so good, so good. And it's not just funny. It's not just trying to yeah. be comedy. Well, and that's the thing. It's like it's a very serious Star Trek show. The comedy comes when they are in their off time. So you'll get some it's really, a, really. It's funny a awesome. very serious Star Trek parody. Yeah, you know. It's it's really a lot like Galaxy Quest. Yeah. Only funnier. I think Orville's funnier than Galaxy Quest. Um, I, I think that's only because Orville has a whole show to be funny in. Whereas... The Galaxy Quest only had a movie. They only had two hours. That, and they decided that um, Tony Shalhoub shouldn't smoke grass uh, in the, the opening scene. So all of his stuff makes more sense. Right. Because they actually filmed that scene where he was getting high as hell before they went out to talk to those people. <laughs> and that's why he's high through the rest of the, <laughs> the, the movie. Tony, to, to, I, I don't want to sidetrack too much, but t for me, as much as I love the entire cast of that, that movie, Tony Shalhoub and um, uh, Sam Rockwell, mm -hmm. Sam Rockwell, mm -hmm. they make the movie. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Anyway, back to the list. Okay, the next show is Martin, Martin, Martin. I can't say okay. the show without. So, so, so I'm going to give you my overview of Martin right now. I'm going to leave. You okay. two carry on the show and keep me out of it. I okay. fucking hated this show. You hated the show? Yep. When it was on, I was not a fan. I, I thought it was pandering a little bit. Um, I have gone back and watched it in, 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 in later on, and it's funny, but it's not Martin Lawrence that's funny. It's uh, I don't think he's a funny person at all. It's Tisha Campbell who's funny. Tisha Campbell's hysterical. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for her, yeah, I, I don't like this show either. Yeah, I'm Thomas McCall like, Ford Martin as Tommy Martin. is funny. Yeah, that's well, it's a, that's the thing. Um. Martin is just Martin. Yeah. Right? And other than occasionally doing a wacky other character, mm -hmm. um, which is still hit or miss, and I'm going to say a good 40% miss. No, yeah. I'm sorry. 60% miss, even mm -hmm. with those. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I am always surprised at people who say they really like this show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, even in, in terms of uh, black uh, focused comedy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even Rock was, time, Rock was better. Rock yeah, was there better. Were tons Rock was of better. better good, to, good times was better. The Jeffersons were better. It, I, 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 you Fresh Prince start. was better. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, what was it? Living Single? Living yes. Single was way better. Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't understand the Mr. love Cooper. people. Yeah, that was another really good one. Um, yeah, I just don't understand the love people have for this show. Nope. Yeah. Nope, not at all. Yep. Yep. So, Will, we, we don't think Martin is good. So there you go. That's on you. Mm -hmm. uh, the next uh, show in uh, Will's list is The Boondocks. Uh, it's an American adult animated sitcom created by Aaron Magruder for Cartoon Network's late night programming block Adult Swim. It is based upon its comic strip of the same name. The series premiered on November 6, 2005. The show focuses on a dysfunctional black American family, the Freemans, uh, settling into the fictional, friendly, and predominantly white suburb of Woodcrest. Uh, there's perspectives offered by the <coughs> cultural, lifestyle, social classes, stereotypes, viewpoints, and radicalized identities uh, – Provides for much of the series satire, comedy, and conflict. Um, 
Now, like the last season of the Boondocks, Aaron Magruder didn't have anything to do with because, uh, you know, they brought it back for, you know, like four years later for like one season. I could tell you it is not as good as the rest of it. Um, but the Boondocks, I just don't think it ran long enough to – everything I saw in the Boondocks I thought was funny. But again, it's, it's the same thing. I am swimming through the pool when I poke my head up and see the Boondocks. It's funny. Um, particularly the play between Riley and Huey, um, played by the same voice actor, which I always thought was funny. Um, but of course, they're supposed to be twins. Um, uh, but the character of Huey, I, I just love. But then again, I also loved him in the the, the comic strip from the newspaper. What do you guys think about the Boondocks? I've never watched the Boondocks. I can't give you a whole lot on it. It's just not something that ever drew my attention. Yeah, so I'm with Jeff. I've never watched it. Um, a, I'm, I'm not its target audience, mm -hmm. right? But I will say this: um, I've seen, you know, I've seen clips and stuff like that. Um, I, I get the humor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't say anything negative about it, right? Because I've never actually watched it. But I can say that the, the voice acting and the animation are really nice, really well done. Yes, yes, yeah, the animation's really good because it's, it's, it's almost an anime style, and sometimes it right. is a straight-up anime style. Um, it's really good, but again, there's not a lot to it. It's like Detroiters, I want to say. It's funny because they, they threw out everything they had, and then they were done. You know, and I think that that last series, and I want to say that last season was only like seven or eight episodes, wasn't nearly as funny. It was like you, you should have been, you should have been, you know, twenty five episodes and done, because that's basically what it was before. I want to say between twenty five and thirty. Um, Gee, I wonder what other shows have done things like that. <coughs> Invader Zim. Uh -huh. Invader Zim. There you go. Yes, jo uh, Invader Zim. You do your twenty five episodes, you get out, you go do something else. It's brilliant. Um, don't don't drag it back years later to try and squeeze out another season. Yeah. Um well and you know we we talked about this a lot of these shows that we've talked about most of them went on too long. That's that's that seems to be the the consensus that that we're drawing is like well it was fine when it first started but you know it kind of outlived its usefulness. <laughs> my my list has one that absolutely uh defies that that uh, commonality. What's that? Are we on my list? <laughs> well, okay. The last one on Wills is the French Prince of Bel Air. I can't say enough about this show. Um, from the theme song uh, uh, to the ending to how it ended, I thought this show was brilliant. Yep. Um, I did not care for uh, Will in the first season. Um. They all grew throughout yeah. the series. Yeah, and, and I will say this: I, I think I think it's because I didn't understand where that kid was supposed to be coming from. But it, I think it made more sense second season on. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, so this is probably you know for modern television. Um, going to end up being iconic down the road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just absolutely brilliant. Pretty much everybody in the cast was outstanding. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Both I, and Bibs were great. I, I want to say that uh, the older sister. Um, uh, I'd have to look it up because I don't remember. Yes, yeah, so she's the Hillary. She's, Hillary. Hillary. For me, she's the only weak link. Right? They never gave her anything other than being spoiled rich girl who shops all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, she got, um, it got, a, she got a little serious, but you're right. They didn't give her anything to work with. And I don't think she was looking for anything to work with. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. I, I think that's a disservice to both the actress and the character. Yeah. Um, Cause they did with the exception of maybe jazz, you know, they did kind of explore everybody else. Uh, but yeah, absolutely brilliant show from beginning to end. Um, the growth of the characters throughout, uh, yeah, just it, it, it will be maybe not uh, a Lucille Ball type of 
um, legendary status, mm -hmm. but you know, it's 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 gonna Fresh it's Prince, gonna be in the Hall of Fame. I, for sure. I think I think Fresh Prince belongs in the Hall of Fame, like Friends. Yeah. I love Lucy. Cheers, Night Court. I think it. I think it really does. I think it's great. They had some very um, dramatic moments in the series that were mm -hmm. brilliantly done. Um, oh God, when they went back to when they went back to Philadelphia after the riots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, or the one with his dad. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Ben wasn't Ben Vereen. Ben Vereen. Yeah. Yep. Ben Vereen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some brilliant stuff. Uh, I just saw. Matter of fact, just saw a clip of an episode um, on Facebook videos just the other day of the episode where Carlton ends up taking some drugs that were in Will's locker mm -hmm. um, and just brilliantly acted, brilliantly acted. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I can't say enough about this show. This is a great show. Great show. Okay. Donald, you you got some you'd you'd like to mention? Yeah, so I absolutely could not narrow it down to five. Okay. Right. So, but I'm just gonna breeze through the list. Okay. Um I, I guess not in the order though. So uh Avenue Five. Okay. Um never saw it. Really funny. I, I've gone, gotten yeah. a, Well, yeah. Um my only complaint about that show is uh what's his name? Josh, Josh Gad. I hate him. <laughs> like as the voice of the snowman in Frozen, he's uh -huh. great. I have hated him in everything else I see him in. Even the Rocker. I didn't see the Rocker. Oh, oh yeah, my God, I don't. Great. I don't like Josh Gad. No, I just I looked him I, up. because I he like always plays the same kind of character, mm -hmm. and he's the kind of character that I, I want to immediately. Um, Choked to death in a very deep pool of water. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Hugh Laurie, uh, I will watch anything he is in. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, hello, hello. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Hello, hello. Uh, was a British sitcom that was made by the same people who made Are You Being Served? But it takes place in occupied France during the Second World War. It is brilliant. And well, and the big gag here is that. It's supposed to be in French, mm -hmm. which is why the Englishman, all his grammar is all screwed up throughout yes. the entire show, right? Because he's an Englishman trying to speak French, mm -hmm. even though what you're hearing is English. And it's just so that the meta gag for me uh, is part of what puts that over the top. Yes. Um, yes, because the Germans are speaking German. No, they're speaking English with a German accent. The right. French people people are speaking French with a French accent. The English people are speaking. Okay, the two English pilots <laughs> who've been hiding out. When they start talking, you don't understand a word they're saying because it's all weird English euphemisms. Right. And then the one uh, Englishman who's working with the French Resistance as a as a police a french policeman never pronounces anything right right yeah the french policeman cracks me up the most probably um also uh fraser okay right so i'm Off not of cheers so it's not kelsey grammar for me though with mm -hmm. fraser it's david hyde pierce and uh janet um jane jane cleaves jane cleaves uh, and the dad, um, who make yeah. the show for me. Oh, yeah. Um, well, and BB Newworth because she is funny, a wonderful actress and smoking hot. Uh, yeah. In, 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 a goth, in a goth chick way. So I love Frasier, um, but not for Frasier. No, no. I think, I think. Oh, and Roz. Um, oh yeah. Roz. Perry Gilpin. Yeah. Again, I really like her character's humor and I don't know why can't quite put my finger on it uh gee i don't know see and i'm and i'm probably and i'm probably in the minority with this because i know that fraser was an insanely popular show and they've even brought it back mm -hmm. um i was not as big of a fan of fraser as i was cheers i i don't I, like kelsey grammar I, I couldn't hang i just couldn't hang with it i, I don't I like don't, yeah i'm with you i, I don't like kelsey no john I like mahoney kelsey, every no, i, I, I like agree with kelsey don grammar 
I like Kelsey Grammer. I think he, I think he's a good actor. Um, I just, I just didn't, I just really didn't enjoy Frasier. I uh, see. I'm, I'm with Don. I liked everybody else in it, but Kelsey Grammer. Hmm. I, I, I like Kelsey Grammer as an actor. Yeah, you know, just not um, as Frasier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so also, I have uh, the IT crowd. Okay, the IT um, crowd is brilliant. I have yeah, watched especially that for many us, times. right? For yes. anybody in IT. Yes, yeah. the IT crowd. It, it, that's that's a a that is not as highly of a publicized show as it should have been. I think that was a brilliant show, um, and whenever I watch it, we get, I get to the last episode and I'm sad because I want more. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. God, I have a, a ton. I kind of want to go in these in a specific order. Um, Will and Grace. Uh, and again, this is for, so Will and Grace for me is for. I'm terrible with actors, but it's for Jack and Karen. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they make this show for me. I Agreed. couldn't care less about Will or Grace. Yeah. Yeah. I could agree with that. Yeah. That's that's another show that they tried to bring back too. Yes. Actually, the, the I watched the 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 bring back. It was really funny because it was mostly. Ch- it was mostly Jack and Karen. Right. Because <laughs> they should have they called it the Jack and Karen show. They that would have been a spin-off that people would watch. Yeah. Um, we touched on Go On, you know, I absolutely yeah. love. Yeah. Um, Laverne and Shirley. Um, really? Yeah. yeah. Uh Laverne and Shirley, growing up watching it, I laughed out loud at that show a lot. Okay. Um, more even than Happy Days. So Happy Days is is a good family comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, like Nash, right? With yes. with some dramatic moments, um, but not always, uh, not even always frequently. Uh, laugh out loud, mm-hmm. right? Just good, solid laughs and stuff like that, but not bust the gut laughing, yeah. right? I got more of that with Laverne and Shirley, uh, and then uh, Mork and Mindy. Okay. Uh, Mork, Mork and Mindy would be more for more for me than Laverne and Shirley. I watched every episode of Laverne and Shirley, uh, yep. you know, all the way to they moved to California and Shirley left the show. Um, so you saw the whole think, series. Yeah, I, I think saw, moving to California was the that they should have ended the show there. Right, right. But that it, was a shark. That was a, that was a good one. I just wouldn't put it in this in this list. I actually probably would have put Mork and Mindy in this list before that one, but uh, but. Both, both good shows. Both good shows. Well, also, so I'm a little bit older than you, um, so uh, that may be why I have you know fonder recollections of of Laverne and Shirley than you do. That makes um, sense. But yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely lots of laugh out loud moments, um, and then also for fairly recently, uh, fairly no, scratch that, uh, WKRP. Yes, which is um, hard to find because of the music. Yes. Yeah, uh, just what a great cast. Mm-hmm. What an absolutely mm-hmm. funny, funny show. Yeah. Uh, and then Drew Carey. Okay. I laughed out loud a lot. Uh, and not just that. Drew, you yeah. know. And I it was, stay, it was the I cast as a whole. I couldn't stay yeah. with that one consistently, though. Um, they, they, uh, so not always consistent with the, with the writing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to, to, it was a great cast and consistently for me, lots of laugh out loud moments. Yep. Um, and then, so this show for me just has a special place in my heart. Um, not as many laugh out loud moments as some of the others I mentioned, but some of the biggest ones and that's family ties. Okay. Brilliant show. The thing I like best about Family Ties is there was always an A and B story running. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, always an A and B story, yeah. and, and 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 generally the B story was the funny story, and the A story was a serious story. But the B story could get could get weirdly funny, and that's what I think that's what made that show. That B story was always just off the wall goofy shit going on in the background yeah i mean there was a time there was a time period that thursday nights was the cosby show which i know would happen with cosby and everything Mm -hmm. and 
people kind of put that aside. But in its time, Cosby Show was really good. And then you had Family Ties, and then you had Night Court, and then you had mm-hmm. Cheers. I'd, and I'm mi- I'm mixing the order up of that. Yeah, that it was on. But but that was that was the Thursday NBC powerhouse. Yeah, and they right. had it locked down for years. And then they added so, they'd lose a show and they'd add Seinfeld and then they'd lose a show and they added friends and, and See, and there's people that are going to want that are going to tell us Seinfeld should have been in this list. And I disagree. I don't I don't think Seinfeld, Seinfeld is funny. I don't no. I I'm not a big fan of Seinfeld. Not uh, the supporting cast is very funny. Unfortunately, unfortunately for me, Seinfeld is so not funny that not even the cast, the, the rest of them can make me watch that show. Yeah. See, uh, I like, I think Larry David's funny. Um, I think not, Seinfeld's not funny. Larry David's I, not I know, cast. I know, I know. The, the, I think... Curb Your Enthusiasm, way better show. I think Larry David's funny, but he was the head writer. I think Jerry Seinfeld is funny. I think uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is funny. I think... Uh, Oh my God, Michael Richards is funny. Jason Alexander ruins that show. His character is so unlikable as a human being, it kills that show for me. I, and, Jason Alexander ruins that show for me because well, I think everybody else is funny. But I think Michael Richards is is a I think he is a short dosage character, and it it just it's too much. It's it's too much. But anyway, we're talking about a show that we hate. We Don finish, <laughs> finish, finish, finish your list. Yes. So um. Where was I? Okay, so big ones, though. Um, if you can, when you're YouTubing, because this is another one that I can only find episodes on uh, YouTube. Okay. Um, also built on the absolute greatness that is Tony Shalhoub uh-huh. as Stark Raving Mad. <gasps> that show was so funny. It did that not get a chance. Is hands down for me one of the funniest damn shows I've ever seen in my life put that, put that in the text chain so i can add it to the youtube yeah, I, playlist. Didn't, I didn't watch that one. Oh, oh my god, god. So well okay is if he doesn't do stark raving mad he never does monk or if he if stark raving mad keeps going he never does monk that's the only sad part about that so the premise is and this is this is uh early neil patrick harris if not where he got his start um tony shalhoub is a horror writer right um, beloved, well-known, uh, like Stephen King level, except he can't make a deadline. Uh, he just <laughs> ignores him. He just doesn't care. And his publisher is going nuts. They hire Neil Patrick Harris to basically ride his ass and get stuff turned in. Neil Patrick Harris is a... Mm, uh, whiny skinny what he's a lot like monk except you know without the crime solving he's yes. a germaphobe he's paranoid he's um led a sheltered life and the whole ensemble cast um is is really funny the gags are funny neil patrick harris and tony shalhoub playing off each other is brilliant. I laugh out loud every single episode. Yeah. And thinking I about it is it. funny. That's how funny that show is. Just thinking right. about it is funny. Um, I think another you've, one. You've gone past your five. You only get five. You only get five. Uh, you only I, get I five, man. No, nope, not just five. Sorry. Okay. Well, okay. Nope. I'm going to throw two in. I'm going to break your rules uh, okay. because I think both of these are. Um, uh, damn you, five. You only get five. Uh, we can do more episodes, dude. Uh, the Dick Van Dyke Show. Um, and again, this is because I'm older. Uh-huh. And Faulty Towers. So oh. we, we've done we've done we've done an episode of Faulty Towers. We don't have to believe you're that one. Um, I'll just write these notes down so Dick, I will remember to put it in the playlist. Dick. Well, we already have an episode on Faulty Tower now, but Dick Van Dyke, um, that's another one I've seen every episode of, and I've seen them multiple times because it was it was one of those afternoon comedy shows that we got yeah. on specific stations, um, 
and 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 there are laugh out loud moments in that show as well and there's many of them many 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 yeah. of them. well it's a, so it's a groundbreaking show mm -hmm. right um it introduces us to mary tyler moore yes uh, which just for that you know uh gives it legendary status um the the the, the writing room with rosemary and then those were the funniest moments yeah. Like oh, yeah. you were always going to be on the floor um and then I'm sorry, I got to throw in this one more because I mentioned this is the show that um, breaks the the going on too long thing. Blackadder. Okay. Blackadder was a great show too, and it and it it also does have some laugh out moments, uh, loud moments as well. So uh, I hate the first season. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, I'm not a big uh, fan of the first season. My favorite yeah. season is the is the uh, Blackadder goes forth. The World War II one. Yeah. The World War One. World War World One. One. Yeah. So my favorite is the third. So I don't like the first one because Black Adder is weak. Yes. yes. Right? Agreed. Um, too so Hugh Laurie and Rowan Atkinson together mm -hmm. are just fucking not as good as Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry, but gold comedy gold. Yeah, but in the in the third and the fourth, they're <laughs> all in there. They're all in there together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why my favorite season is the third. Oh, right? the Regency like, period one. Yeah, that's yeah, a really good Lori one too. Is but... the, is the pre oh my god! But the fourth one is my is my favorite. I I can't disagree with that. That that needs to be in there. But yeah, yeah, Black Adder. Okay, so Wait, you will. So Jeff, there's a British comedy that you like. I'm not the British comedy hater. That's oh, Randy. that's, that's right. Randy. No, that's, Randy. that's Randy. Yeah, I love British comedy except I for can't Chef. Understand why Randy no. doesn't like Chef? No, 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 it's not Chef that he loves. It's uh, it's Doc Martin. Doc Martin's the only show he likes. Yeah, I, t I don't understand how he hates Chef. That's probably because he knows guys like that. But that's what makes it funny. <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to have to cut this off because I would add Chef to this list, too. Um, in its earlier I'm going to put all these in the YouTube playlist later it, on. It's that's, that's why I keep – that's why you, you keep hearing these messages. We're all in a chat. I'm adding them as we go. Yeah. So, no, so we got we to we cut it off right there. We, yeah. We've gone way over. Well, Super we're at, over. We're at an hour that's and a half. Fault. We're at an hour and a half right now. So. And we still got a murder to go. Yeah. I apologize. No, no, that's fine. I mean, that's why we I, wanted you on, dude. We appreciate these lists. The back and forth is great. Um, you know, give these, give these shows a watch. Uh, you, you can let us know what you think. Send us your comments. Uh, you can find us on the, on the website as always, uh, give us comments of what you think. Tell us, you know, do you disagree with us? Do you agree with us? Um, give us ones of your own. Um, but yeah, we've gone, we've gone a, quite a ways now. So I think we ought to step over to the murdery side of the house. Murder. So. I intentionally, I had this uh, th this story for another episode, and I intentionally moved it up to this one because since we're talking about comedy and 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 laugh out loud moments, I'm going to bring you down badly. Oh, I thought you were going to give us a laugh out loud murder. No, 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 no. This there is nothing. Th there shouldn't be nothing to laugh out loud in this. Um, as a matter of fact, I want to give the full warning before I go in. This story has graphic violence, bodily harm, and sexual assault. And to me, this is probably the most brutal story I've done since Sylvia Likens. Oh! Um, when Sylvia I, Likens made me cry. This one might as well. It's okay. pretty rough. Um I got my information off Medium, uh, Wikipedia, the Scare Chamber, and how stuff works, and 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 forgive me because this is going this this happened in Japan. There's a lot of Japanese um, uh, names in here and places, and uh, and I'm probably going to do a terrible job with it, for, so forgive me. But this is the story of the torture and murder of Yunko for for Furuta. Yunko Furuta. Yes. So, Yunko was a 17-year-old high school Japanese student who was abducted, sexually assaulted, tortured, and murdered by four high school boys over 40 days. Oh, my God. Um, her case was called the Concrete Encased High School Girl Murder Case since her body was discovered in a concrete drum. 
She was a beautiful, friendly, and popular girl who took her studies seriously, and she was considered a good girl who got high grades and didn't do drugs. Uh, but sadly, her life was taken because one particularly boy's romantic advances were declined by Yunko, and he wasn't going to let that slide. The crime has been described as the worst case of juvenile delinquency in post-war Japan. Uh, Yunko was born in Masato, the Saitama Prefecture. Uh, she lived with her parents, her older brother, and her younger brother. She attended Yashio Minami High School and worked part-time jobs after school to save up money for a graduation trip and had dreams of becoming a singer. <clears throat> she also accepted a job as an electronics retailer where she planned on working after graduation. And at high school, uh, Yunko was well-liked by her classmates. Uh, and again, she had very high grades. She was very infrequently absent. Uh, the night she was abducted, she had been looking forward to going home and watching the final episode of the television show Tonbo, which is translated to Dragonfly. Um, her abductors were four boys who attended the same high school. Uh, Joe Agura, who was age 17. Shinji Minato, who was age 16. Yasushi Watanabe, age 17. And the ringleader of the group, Miyano Hiroshi, who was age 18. In court documents, they were referred to as A, B, C, and D. Uh, Miyano had a history of problematic behavior since he was a child, such as shoplifting and damaging school property, and continued committing crimes through the following years. In April of 1986, he enrolled in private school in Tokyo, although he dropped out the following year. And after this, he continued to commit several crimes over time. At the time of Yonko's murder, Miyato was living with his girlfriend, who was the older sister of Yasushi Watanabe. However, Miyano ended up joining a gang and started committing sex crimes, which caused his girlfriend to end their relationship. During the torture and murder of Yonko, they used the second floor of Minato's house, which they frequently used as a hangout, in the house that he lived with his parents. What? Yeah. Um, Mignano also had connections to the Japanese mafia, which is called the Yakuza. And Mignano had previously participated in tri crimes for the Yakuza, such as purse snapping, extort extortion, and rape. And it's possible that Yunko wasn't aware of their ties to the y Yakuza or their previous crimes. Additionally, there's a lot of English articles that state that Miyano was the one who actually, who actually asked Yonko to date him, while Japanese articles state it was actually Minato, Minato who asked, so it's really unclear who it was. I, I want to, I'm sorry, I want to clarify something here. The house where they were, where they kept her? Mm -hmm. um, For 40 days. And mm -hmm. that was the home where the person with the Yakuza ties lived? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that makes sense. Because a second-story home, uh, a two-story home in Japan, implies money. Right. Um, right. Yeah, so that, okay, so that makes sense. Wow. That also explains why nothing was said mm -hmm. by... Or, yeah. Yes, because the parents were afraid. I, I actually go into that. Uh, so on November 25th, 1988, Miyano and Minato were walking around town with the intention of robbing and raping local women when they noticed Junko on her bike around 8.30 p.m. Uh, Mignano, Miyano ordered Minato to run her over and push her off the bike and then flee the scene, and under the pretense of having witnessed this happen, Miyano walked over to her, helped her up, and offered to walk her home safely. On her way there, he gained her trust, which allowed him to trick her into going to a warehouse where he threatened to kill her. In this warehouse, he raped her, and then raped her again at a hotel nearby. From that motel, Miyano called Minato and the other two perpetrators and bragged about what had just been done to Yunko. And Ogura asked Min Mi Miyana to keep her captivity to allow them and others to sexually assault her as well, as this group had a history of gang rape and had previously kidnapped and assaulted another girl, but ended up releasing her afterwards. afterwards. That girl never reported it, as she knew about their ties to the Yakuza and was terrified of what could happen to her and her family if she told. Right on. Around 3 a.m., Miyano took Yunko to a nearby park where the other three boys were waiting. Uh, they the boys were se serial sexual predators, and they usually let their victims go, but Yonko's suffering had only begun. 
They learned her home address in one of her notebooks and told her they were part of the Yakuza, and if she tried to escape, they'd kill her whole family. The four boys overpowered her, took her to her house in the Ayasi district of Adachi, and then gang raped her. And this was the house, which was owned by Minato's parents, and soon began their regular gang hangout. Two days later, on November 27th, uh, Yonko's parents reported her missing. Uh, and to hinder the investigation, Miyano forced her to call her parents three times to convince them that she had run away and was perfectly safe staying with friends. Originally, whenever Minato's parents were around, they forced Yonko to act like he was Minato's girlfriend. However, they soon stopped the act when they realized his parents wouldn't contact the police. Minato's mother later confessed they didn't want to contact the police because their son had been previously violent towards them and they were afraid of his connections to the Yakuza, as we mentioned. The group held Yonko prisoner for 40 days, where they repeatedly beat, raped, and tortured her. They would even invite other men and boys to the home to participate in her assault. Oh my god. On the night of November 28th, they invited two other boys, Te- Tetsuo Nakamura, or Nakamura and Ko- Koichi Ihara to the home. Uh, they went upstairs where Yonko was sitting, wearing a long sleeve t-shirt and a skirt that Miyano had stolen from a clothing store a few days prior. The, dro- the group drank cough medicine, pretending it was drugs and act high, and Yonko was screaming in fear and tried to run away, but was ultimately stopped. Uh, hearing the commotion, Minato's mother went to check on the boys, and they told her they were just messing around and everything was fine. After she left, the boys began to gang rape Yonko as she was in a state of unconsciousness, just staring at the ceiling without blinking. Over the next 40 days, Yonko was subjected to being raped on a daily basis. At one time, she was even raped by 12 different men in the same day and was raped by around 100 different men around 400 times. Oh my god. By December 1st, 1988, uh, the gang was getting bored, but they didn't want to let Yonko go. They began beating her, and at one point she was hung from the ceiling and used as a punching bag. Her nose bled so badly that she could only breathe through her mouth. When they let her down from the ceiling, they dropped dumbbells on her stomach, thus greatly damaging her internal organs. She was forced to eat cockroaches, and when she asked for water and was giving anything to drink, often her own urine, she vomited it out almost immediately. By September 10, 1988, she was unable to walk properly due to the severe burns on her legs. She was beaten with bamboo sticks and sticks and then golf clubs. She had her hands smashed with exercise weights and her nails cracked in such a way as to inflict abdominal pain, and several days later, the boys poured hot wax on her face. They burnt her eyelids with a cigarette lighter, and then she was stabbed with sewing needles in the chest, and if that wasn't enough, they clipped her left nipple with a pair of pliers, and it was ripped off. Oh my god. The four boys shaved her public hair, forced her to dance naked, and masturbate while they listened to music, and when, and when she was beaten so badly to the point she couldn't even walk, they forced her to sleep outside on the balcony during the cold winter with very little clothing, and also forced her to sleep in the freezer. Objects were also insult- inserted into her vagina and anus, including a metal rod, a bottle, and a lit match. And they also force fed her large amounts of water, milk, and alcohol. Good God. There came a point when she was so injured and sick she couldn't even keep water down, she would instantly throw it up. And she was also forced to inhale paint thinner and smoke multiple cigarettes at once and was repeatedly burned on her legs and arms with lighter fluid. By the time the end of December came, Yonko was extremely malnourished as she was only fed very little food and eventually nothing but milk. She had extreme injuries and horrible infections and could no longer even walk up and down the stairs to use the bathroom and became solely confined to the bedroom where she lost full control of her uh, bladder and bowels. Her face was so badly beaten that her nasal cavity was full of blood and her brain even had shrunk from the damage. Mm. At one point, she managed to sneak a phone call to the police, but was caught before she could say anything, and as a punishment, she was again severely beaten. She was burnt with cigarette butts and then covered in lighter fluid across her arms and legs and then set on fire. She would often beg them just to kill her, but they always refused. But towards the end of her life, she was so beaten and sick that she lost all beauty, and her body even started giving off a rotten smell, which eventually made the boys lose interest in her. 
This caused them to go out and gang rape another 19-year-old woman, but she was released afterwards. On January 4th, 1989, Miyano lost a game of Mahjong and decided to take his anger out on Yonko by again pouring lighter fluid on her body and lighting her on fire. Yonko allegedly tried putting out the fire, but ultimately became unresponsive. They continued to beat her, lighting a candle and dripping hot wax onto her face, and placed two small candles on her eyelid and then forced her to drink her own urine. And then after she was kicked, she fell into a stereo unit and began having convulsions. Considering the fact that she was bleeding heavily and pus was squirting out of her infected burns, they covered her hands in plastic bags and continued to beat her, along with dropping an iron exercise ball under her stomach multiple times. And this attack lasted roughly two hours before she eventually passed away. Being afraid of char being charged for murder, the boys wrapped her body in blankets and shoved her body into a travel bag. Then they placed her body into a 55 uh, U.S. gallon drum and filled it with cement. At around 8 p.m., they loaded it and disposed of it in a cement truck in Kodo, Tokyo. During her captivity, Yonko had mentioned that she would regretting not watching the last episode of Tombow Dragonfly, as I said before, and so Mignano found the videotape of the last episode and placed it in the travel bag. And he claimed that he, did, he didn't do it because he pitied Yonko, but because he didn't want her to return as a ghost and haunt him. <clears throat> On January 23, 1989, Miyano and Ogura were arrested for the gang rape of the 19-year-old girl who they had kidnapped in December. On March 29, two police officers came to question them as women's underwear had been found at their addresses. And during the questioning, Miyano believed one of the officers was aware of the murder of Yonko and his involvement in it. And he assumed that Ogura confessed to the crimes to the police, so Miyano told the police where they could find the body. The officers were very puzzled by this confession as they weren't talking about Yonko at all. <laughs> they were actually talking about the murders of a different woman and her seven-year-old son that took place several days before Yonko's addiction, and that case remains unsolved to this day. The police did find the drum that contained Yonko's body and were able to identify her by her fingerprints. On April 1st, 1989, Ogura was arrested for another sexual assault and was subsequently arrested for Yonko's murder. The arrest of Minato and Watanabe, along with Minato's brother, all followed. Several other people who also participated in the abuse and rape were also identified, including Tetsuo Nakamura and Koichi Ihara, who were all charged with rape after their DNA was found on and inside of Yonko. The identities of the defendants were sealed in court as they were all juveniles at the time. But jur journalists from the Shukan Bunshun magazine uh, uncovered their identi identities and published them on the grounds that given the severity of the crime, the accused did not deserve to have their right to uphold uh, an 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 anonymity upheld. I think doxed them. Yep. Doxed them, 1989 style. Nice. The editor-in-chief said, to make a long story short, we decided that beasts don't have human rights. Um, all four defendants pled guilty to committing bodily injury that resulted in death rather than murder. Miano was sentenced to 17 years in prison, Minato 5 to 9, Watanabe 5 to 7, and Ogura 8 years, all in juvenile detention. Uh, Miano appealed his sentence, but Tokyo High Court Judge Ryu, Ryuji Yanaz, I probably terrible at that one, uh, sentenced him to additional three years in prison. Uh, that 20-year sentence is the second longest given in Japan before life imprisonment. Uh, Miyano, who, who continued to be involved with the Yakuza, was arrested for fraud later after, after he was released. Minato, who, was orig who originally received a four- to six-year sentence, was resentenced to five to nine years by that same judge upon appeal. It's wild. He appealed his sentence and got more time. <laughs> Uh, Minato's parents and brother were not. Charged. I love Japan. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to appeal to get off. No, we're just going to give you more time. Give you more time. Uh, Minato's parents and brother were not charged. Uh, after Minato's release, he moved in with his mother. However, in 2018, Minato was arrested again for attempted murder after beating a 32 year old man with a metal rod and thrashing his thr slashing his throat with a knife. Holy crap. Yasushi Watanabe, who was originally sentenced to three to four years in prison, received an upgraded sentence of five to seven years. And for his role in the crime, Joe Agura served eight years in juvenile prison before he was released in August of 1999. 
after his release, he took the family name Kamisaku uh, when he was adopted by a supporter. He is said to have boasted about his role in the kidnapping, rape, and torture of, of Yonko. And in July of 2004, Aguro was arrested for assaulting Takash, Tak Takatoshi Isano, who was an acquaintance he thought his girlfriend may have been involved with. He tracked Asano down, beat him, and shoved him into his truck, relocated him into his mother's bar in Masato, and beat him for hours. During that time, Agura repeatedly threatened to kill the man, telling him that he had killed before and he knew how to get away with it. He was sentenced to seven years in prison for assaulting Asano and has since been released. And Agura's mother allegedly vandalized Yonko's grave, stating she had been the reason his son's life was ruined. Really? Hmm. Um, while it's not clear why their sentences were so short, the most likely answer was that they were tried as juveniles rather than adults based on J the Japanese legal system at the time. And perhaps the courts thought they could be rehabilitated because they were so young as, to, as opposed to being locked up for decades or sentenced to death. Uh, Yonko's parents were dismayed by the sentences and uh, received by their daughter's killers and won a civil suit against the parents of Minato, good, uh, where the crimes were committed. Uh, Miyano's mother reportedly play, paid Yonko's parents 50 yen, which is uh, the equivalent to $370,000, uh, as ordered by the civil court and forced them to sell that home. So, okay, I'm um, sorry. So, not 50 yen. 50 million yen. 50 million yen. Sorry, yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Yonko's funeral was held on April 2nd, 1989, and one of her friend's memorial address stated, Yun Chen, welcome back. I have never imagined that we would see you again in this way. You must have been in so much pain, so much suffering. The happy we all made for the school festival really look good on you. We will never forget you. I have heard that the principal has presented you with a graduation certificate, so we graduate together, all of us. Yun Chen, there is no more pain, no more suffering. Please rest in peace. That that one tears at me. Oh, yeah. Um, Yonko's intended future employer presented her parents with the uniform she would have worn in the position she accepted, and that was placed Aww. in her casket. Uh, after her graduation, Yonko's school principal did present her with the high school diploma, which was given to her parents. And the location near where uh, Yonko's body was discovered has, has been developed since is now Wakasu Park. At the time, Japanese people were concerned about a U.S.-influenced epidemic of violent crime, which they called the American disease, and at least three books have been written about the crime. There was an exploitation film called Concrete Encased High School Girl Murder Case about the incident directed by Katsuo Matsumura in 1995. I bet that translates, that sounds, that translation sounds better in Japanese. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Yunjin Kitagawa, later a member of the musical duo Yuzu, played, a, played the role of the principal culprit, and Mai Sasaki played the role of Yonko. The case was also an in inspiration for the film Concrete in 2004, where, where Miyano's uh, name was changed to Tatsu uh, Osugui, portrayed by Japanese former act actor Sosuke Taka, Takaoka. And Yonko Futura's name was changed to Misaki and is portrayed by Japanese pornographic actress Miki Komori and the manga 17 Sai. And the last note I have on here, sadly, all four boys are now free and walking the streets. What? Yep. All four of them are, are free. As horrible as this is, I'm not surprised, though. Because what, the... This went through the courts in the early to mid nineties, right? Yep. Yeah, eighty nine, ninety. Yeah. So Japan, uh, in many ways, especially at that time, still a very conservative place, mm -hmm. and you see that here, right? You see, um, for here, young white male rapists typically get smaller sentences. So yeah, so you know, it's a it's a very uh, we see that here with the conservative um, courts, judges, things like that, and also with the lives of young men being valued more than the lives of women. Um, and you see it because the, the the mother of one violated the girl's grave. It's the right. victim, mm -hmm. right? You yeah. Know, <clears throat> the unfortunately, the poor girls 
are not as important to the to the system, right? Mm-hmm. As uh, as the young men are, so they get the lighter sentences. Right. Um, well, they get to I've, be repeat offenders. I as, was as shocked, obviously these guys were. Even though juvenile, I was still shocked at the at the amount of time that was given to each one of them. I mean, I understand that the 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 one who got the twenty who ended up getting the twenty year sentence after appeal, that was the longest of all of them. But they all were a part of this. They all should have gotten that kind of sentence. And and honestly, because of the just how heinous this crime was, I think they should have gotten life. Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely. Well, so I think crimes like this in general are not treated um, as as the terrible, terrible crimes that they are. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. It's a it's a crime against humanity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you're just, just doing like, it to one person. Um. You know, it's just like the because we have that the hate crime add on now, yeah. right? That right. increases the sentence. Um. I personally don't care why you did it. You know, if you go and beat somebody up, right? I don't care if you did it because you're a racist piece of shit or just because you're a piece of shit in general. Um, Whatever increased severity in sentence should apply regardless because of the type of the crime it is. I don't care why you committed it. Um, so I don't think we should have a, a hate crime add-on. I think all of those types of assault crimes or whatever should it's automatically hate. be bumped up to that level. Yeah, it's all hate. Yeah, it's hate. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm. It's disappointing, but I am not surprised at the absurdly light sentences that they got. So, I mean, like I said, I had this for another episode, but I figured this masterfully did a good job of the highs and the lows. Yes. Yeah, because we did talk yeah. about some funny stuff. Definitely yeah. the good and the bad. So, um, but but I also, I, I, I definitely wanted to bring that story also to the forefront because just like Sylvia Likens, especially mm-hmm. because in Sylvia Likens' case, a lot of the perpetrators against her walked free after mm-hmm. short sentences i think it's important to get that story out and retold uh yunko's i think is another one of those that should that needs to be retold and told again yep. especially because those 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 four walk free and it's sad mm-hmm. it's sad so all right well that will take us to the end of another recording week don we appreciate you coming on with us i know that you're you'll be coming back um but as always, you can find uh, our, our information on nerderymurder.com. That's our hub for everything that we talk about. You'll find the links to our episodes as well as uh, pictures to what we talked about. Plus, you'll find the link to our YouTube page. Yes, our YouTube page. I was just actually just looking at that. that I'm going to be updating with a list of more episodes or more series for this. That's what I was just looking at. Sorry. Uh, which, yeah, we will also eventually put this show on um, – so you can go and hit it then. But yeah, I recommend you go into that YouTube playlist. Uh, we usually put it out weeks ahead of time of the episodes so people can see what, what's coming up and they can get familiarized with it beforehand. Good job. I appreciate all the work you do on that. Thank you, sir. Uh, on our webpage, you can also find the link to our merchandise where if you wish to show off your nerdery and murdery fandom, please do consider purchasing uh, some of the items we have for sale there. Uh, that helps a lot with our show along with our patrons. You can find the link to our Patreon where if you wish to become a patron and donate to the show, help us with the costs that do that are associated with the show. It does cost to keep us on the air, keep us broadcasting. It does not go to our fabulous Lamborghinis and fabulous vacations that we do not take. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. And last but not least, please don't forget to leave a five-star review wherever you can. It helps us, it helps others find our material that may be looking for the, the stuff that we're talking about. Don, thank you again for being a part of the show today. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Zig. And with that, I've been Zig with your nerdery. And I've been Jeffrey with your murdering. Cue the music. <laughs>